I would say over the next couple, like the next month or so, I'm bullish on that aspect. Now you asked me about six to 12 months out, this is the kicker and this is what I'm really fearful about. And one of the reasons why I still think we have one more leg down on Bitcoin is that So it's been it's been a wild road. Um, you know, one of the things I'm a little different from most crypto people because I screw up with stocks, right? So I I, I still do a ton of stocks. But what that enabled me to do is kind of I, I started in the late '90s when the dot com bubble was like you know the crazy moves and and it, it's so it was so interesting because it was like the beginning of my career and it was like deja vu in 2021 when you had some of these Dogecoin moves and stuff like that because I'm like wait a minute, I remember that happening exactly with like .com, like pets.com, like these weird random .com companies. And so I started to be a little bit more nervous. I'm like, you know, this is exactly like a bubble. And ultimately we know what happens when bubbles collapse, you know, everything gets demolished like we've seen. So, so that was really it. And, and yeah, I mean, Bitcoin has had a big fall. I still remember last year in Dubai at the, at the blockchain summit, um, I was the, like the least popular guy there because I was, I was warning people. I was like, you know, Bitcoin's going to collapse. Be ready. It's going to 20,000. And of course, no one wanted to talk to me. I, I still remember presenting and there was like a gasp when I said that because everyone was like, oh, it's 100,000 by the end of November. Right. But um, but yeah, fascinating stuff to watch. And it's the biggest thing to understand. And this goes for everything. Commodities, crypto stocks is that when you're trading anything, you're not trading like Ethereum per se you're trading humans, human emotion, right? So how do people feel? And that's one of the reasons why I love charting is because it's so pure in that it's not about what you're trading, it's just the people that are trading it, the human emotion that's driving it. So greed and fear, right? The two most carnal, emotional drivers of the human human race, that's what rules price. Um, so, so what we have here, and, and again, this is the beauty of it, right, is that it's no coincidence that Bitcoin found a bottom right around that 2017 high. Technically speaking, that is a major retrace. Basically, you had the breakout right here and then the big long up and downs. And then we came back to settle in. So in the short term, that was support. It was kind of one of those easier calls for me to say, yeah, it's going to bounce. It, even in spite of what happened to Voyager and Celsius with the bankruptcies, you know, it's still there was so much negativity that it's hard for me when there's that much negativity to not be slightly positive and bullish. I've just trained my mind to start kind of being a contrarian. So what we what we've seen here is this kind of choppy sideways action slowly moving up. I'll show you the coolest chart here. So if we bring up a parallel channel and we just connect the recent lows, I want to show you what happens if we extend that up. You basically connect the recent highs right here, right? High pivot, high pivot, right to here. And what that tells you is that right around 25,000, you're going to start running into a little bit of resistance, 25,000, 25,500. And interestingly enough, if you look at the Terra Luna collapse low, that happens to be right up in that same range. So, so expect some trouble for Bitcoin. I'm not saying it's going to fall back and collapse back down from there, but I think 25,500 is my short-term price target. And then after that, if it can get through 25.5, you have a good shot of going to about 28 uh, to 30,000. 28,000 here, you can see all these little, like kind of the sideways action. What that is, is it's creating this kind of resistance point. So if price trades up into that, it's gonna slam into it and it's gonna have a lot of trouble getting getting out of that range. And let me just explain the psychology of that. When what happens when you the reason why this is now resistance is because psychologically back then you had a lot of people buying, right? That's when you go sideways, it tells you there's an equal amount of buyers and sellers. So there are a lot of new buyers that were kind of taking a stab right here and it broke down. So all those people are are underwater in their trade. And the reason why it's resistance is when the price comes back to that level, those people are finally like thank goodness I'm break even, thank goodness, now sell, I'm just done with this and I'm going to get out, right? And that's why, so that selling pressure should come out there. So, so the bottom line is I am still bullish on Bitcoin near term, um, but I expect 25.5 to be resistance. If it can get through that, 28,000, 30,000 is kind of my upside secondary target there. So yeah, it's fun stuff. I mean, I love charting. I love, I love being able to kind of look at it, things from a psychological aspect about reading the, the human emotion. And it's amazing how you start, if you think about that and you look back when we were at 68,000 and the bullish sentiment was so pervasive, like think about now saying, wait a minute, 
Now that I know emotion and you go the opposite, maybe I shouldn't have been long at 68,000. It was a good indicator. It might've been topping out. Fed absolutely has an impact. One of the things that I always say to, to crypto traders is remember when you're in crypto, it's not an isolated bubble. You need to know what the Fed's doing. You need to watch the dollar. Even the stock market, we know that Bitcoin has followed the NASDAQ very closely in terms of technology because it's a risk on asset. So when it goes to the Fed, the Fed just recently raised by 75 basis points. The key here is understanding what their outlook is after that. So going into this, everyone knew they were going to raise 75. I saw it everywhere on Twitter and people were right. The question was, and, and the reason why we've seen a continued rally is because the statement afterwards when Jerome Powell did his press conference was very dovish. He basically admitted that they were almost done hiking. Well, if they're almost done hiking, that means a more lenient Fed, which means more money in the system which is a positive for Bitcoin, more money can go into Bitcoin and you can see it go up. So shorter term, I would say over the next couple, like the next month or so, I'm bullish on that aspect. Now you asked me about six to 12 months out, this is the kicker and this is what I'm really fearful about. And one of the reasons why I still think we have one more leg down on Bitcoin is that we have inflation still at 10%. It's going to come down. We've seen commodity prices drop substantially. So that tells us it's going to come down, but it's not going back to 2%. It's probably going to stay around four to five percent. The reason why that's really bad is because as we go into a recession and we saw the GDP number today basically telling us we're in a recession, the Fed cannot save us like past recessions. So if you go back to 2009, we had this great recession, Fed printed trillions of dollars. You know, COVID comes up trillions of dollars, right? Well, with that was all OK because inflation was two percent or under. With 5% inflation, if they start printing again, you're going to see inflation at 15, 20%. So they can't do that. And so how do they save the economy? And if, if Bitcoin is still a risk asset, if the NASDAQ collapses, if the S&P collapses, I think, again, Bitcoin has one more leg down to probably around 12 to 13,000. So my, my six to 12 month target is one more leg lower then a bottom is put in. And then I think the next great bull run starts probably in late 2023. And then again, you're looking at easy 100,000, maybe above. There is, there is the, this is the worst case scenario, right? And, and this is the one that has Bitcoin going down maybe as low as 3,500, but let's, let's hopefully, you know, try not to talk about it too much. But basically, if you look at the dot-com bubble, which the similarities are eerie, like for instance, just a couple similarities, when when Bitcoin was topping out last year, we had February this February, it was known as the crypto crypto Super Bowl. We had so many crypto Super Bowl ads. If you go back to the dot com era just before the collapse, there were it was known as the dot com Super Bowl. All these these things, the, the market caps, three point one trillion at the highs for Bitcoin and crypto, two point nine trillion for dot coms. The same sort of things are replicating. And the reason I bring that up is that if if Amazon was one hundred and twelve dollar stock back then, it collapsed to about $6 uh, during the dot-com bubble. Then it went to 3,500. So think about the X times from six bucks to 3,500. If Bitcoin drops that amount, it puts it at, at about the 3,500 marker. So that would be a worst case scenario. I don't think anyone wants to see that, but that would be the absolute washout of the crypto space, which I, I think you would agree, Austin, is you almost need to see some sort of washout because how do you, how does, how does a, a space, work with 20,000 crypto cryptocurrencies. I just don't know. I, it just seems like too much for me. I mean, I think 12, 13,000 we'll see, but you might be right. And, and you know, I'm kind of, I kind of hope it's not, but I mean, if that's what it takes to clean out the junk, think about the Darwinian thought process of like the strong survive. That's the healthiest thing. So a lot of crypto traders are like, oh my goodness, I hope that doesn't happen. But if you really believe in crypto, the long term of crypto, that's the healthiest thing to happen because I mean, look at Amazon, look at Google. I mean, all these companies were around right around that, that time frame. You had to get rid of the junk so that those could become multi-trillion dollar companies. Again, probably bottoming in the next six to 12 months. Um, and then I think you kind of repeat what you did in 2017, which is you'll have this choppy sideways time for like six months and then you'll start your incline. So I think, I think by 2024, you should be hitting that new all-time high zone. I know it's not what people want to hear. They want to hear it's instantaneous, but let it breathe. Let it kind of get some energy back and then we'll all be rewarded later on. So I happen to be a believer in gold right now. I think long-term Bitcoin far outperforms gold, but you can't deny the fact that if you go back to the beginning of this year, 
gold is the best performing between Bitcoin and the stock market. It's been the safest place to go. Um, and I also think that because of the uncertainty about regulation with crypto, it's keeping a lot of money out. And so I think the safest play, if you're like, hey, listen, I want to put my money someplace, I might only earn five or 10% on it in a year, but that would be gold for now, I think. I think it's the safest place. Um, eventually, I think gold, uh, excuse me, Bitcoin outperforms, but it's going to take that this bear market to be over. So I think, I think with the stock market, it's going to be really interesting. So I think you have another big flush coming on the NASDAQ, on the S&P 500. I think you're seeing another 20, 25% down on those. And I think Bitcoin's going to get affected. I think minimum 12,000, 13,000. We talked about worst case scenario. But I think there's going to be a, a flip point where at some point you're going to see an economy that's mired in stagflation, which means higher inflation with no growth, which is kind of like the boogeyman for, for economists, right? It's the worst case scenario. And I think at some point, Bitcoin flips to start to go up during that period while the markets languish. And the reason I think that is because eventually we're going to be stuck in this recession and the Fed is going to have to start printing again. And as soon as the Fed does that, you're going to see people saying, hey, listen, you know, they can't print too much because the economy can't handle inflation. But it's just that signal that makes Bitcoin kind of turn into a more safety play where people more and more money kind of rotates into that safe safe haven asset, which again, let's be clear, Bitcoin's not a safe haven asset right now, but I do think again, it eventually becomes that, that digital gold, and that's where it starts to outperform. So I, I kind of see a really tough road for the economy for the next multiple years, but I think Bitcoin bottoms out before the end of that and actually starts to move back up. My, my biggest thing is in recessions, we, we find out that we don't know everything, right? So I think in bull markets, everyone thinks they're a genius, right? Um, everyone makes money. In bear markets, we realize that we have to learn. And so I, I, I preach to people to get educated because if you can learn one new thing about trading every day, you will be a different trader in a year, in 10 years, you'll be making so much more money. So education is so important. 